All right, everyone, so today I have the Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now, there's been lots of reviews on this car. I've actually already reviewed this car, but it was at a dealership. It was for like two hours, and it doesn't really give you a good essence of what the car is really like to live with. So Volkswagen dropped off the keys for me uh, for an entire week. So I've had this for seven days, really gave me an opportunity to see what this car is truly like. That way I can give you guys a more detailed review. So in this video, we're gonna check out every detail about the new GLI, the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive through some canyons and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and check out the Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Now, this version, as equipped, this is the Autobahn version. So this is the most, I guess, lavishly equipped version of the GLI that you can buy. And if you've never heard of the GLI, if you don't know what the big deal is with the GLI, it's the most powerful variant and uh, it's supposed to be the most well-equipped. So GLI stands for Grand Luxury Injection. GTI is gonna stand for Grand Touring injection and back in the day uh, the GLI was supposed to be the more luxurious variant over the GTI not really so much the case nowadays uh, especially since the GLI is usually known for getting less power than the GTI but now that they've fixed that issue and this basically is the exact same thing as the GTI I'm gonna see if this is worth that price tag in this video all right so let's start with this color now this color is called tornado red and if you guys have never experienced paint quality on these new uh, Volkswagen products, anything from Volkswagen, Audi to Porsche, uh, it is incredible. So this is like Audi level quality of paint. Uh, and this Tornado Red doesn't have a lot of flake to it. Actually, it doesn't have any like metallic flake to it. It's just a crisp, solid red. Uh, personally, I do wish it had a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of flake, but because of just how nice and just fluid this red looks it's very very satisfying whenever you decide to get it washed or detail it or anything like that it just looks incredible now coming to the front of the gli you have a little bit more aggressive of a front bumper compared to a normal jetta uh, it's not too much of a difference if you guys know anything about german vehicles they're usually very subtle and subtlety is definitely the approach volkswagen took here with the gli i mean it's the same approach they do with the gti and every other vehicle in their lineup uh, but it's a really nice look so if you get a little bit closer you are going to have uh, this area here i do believe nope i take that back there's no functionality there whatsoever uh, you have your intercooler located right down here radiator of course up top there you're going to have your gli symbol located right there and then coming to the lights you are going to have led lights so you guys can see the daytime running led right there it looks nice vivid crisp at night it just gives this car a really nice look paired with the led headlights and then you have led uh, high beams on this vehicle as well but your turn signals are not going to be led on this vehicle now as we come up to the hood i do want to talk about this for just a second because i feel like a lot of people don't mention this but in my time with this car the lines on this vehicle are like physically sharp i mean you run your finger along them and you can feel just how much this metal is creased um, it's pretty impressive and it's definitely beyond anything i've seen in this class so i definitely wanted to give volkswagen credit right there and as you come to the wheels you have these 18 inch alloy wheels and they look pretty good then right behind here you are going to have upgraded brakes so not only are they upgraded from the jetta but these are the same brakes lifted right off of the volkswagen golf r so stopping power should be good and we'll check that out a little bit later once we take it for a drive out in the canyons and then these are actually wrapped in hand cooked tires or 225 45s all the way around and the tread pattern on here is actually pretty impressive so uh just by the looks of these tires they should have a good amount of grip all right so i'm swapping sides on you guys because the sunlight on the other side is just really horrendous but uh from the side profile it's a good looking sedan if you're not a big fan of the sedan look and you'd rather have the hatch look obviously the gti is the way to go over the gli but you can tell from right here just how long this vehicle is and that's going to give you a lot more room in the back seat and we'll check that out for sure once i hop into the back seat and then at this quarter panel view it looks okay the 
back tail lights right here, it kind of reminds me of like the new Altima. Uh, either Altima copied Volkswagen or vice versa, but it looks really, really similar. And I don't know, it just makes it look very basic in my eyes from the back. Um, there's nothing super special at night. The lights look okay, uh, but it's definitely not anything that really stands out. Then as you come to the back, you're going to have these dual exhausts right back here, which you don't have on the regular Jetta. And you have this mini, mini diffuser located right there that looks pretty good. But let's go ahead and listen to how the exhaust sounds. All right, so here's your key for the Volkswagen GLI. Now, uh, it's basically all plastic. You're gonna have your lock, you're gonna have your trunk release, you're gonna have your remote start right there, and then your unlock. And then on the back, you just have the Volkswagen symbol, and then on the side is your panic, and it just shows a little, a little guy running away, which is kind of funny. Uh, and then you also have an area here to pull out a physical key, and that's to unlock the car if uh, the battery on this were to die or if the battery on the car were to die. And then coming to the door handle, you have touch sensitive areas, that's how you're going to lock it and there's a touchpad right behind here and that'll unlock it all right so getting into the gli um as you guys can see the roof is a little low so you just have to duck and it's no, it's no big deal but once you're in here i've got a good amount of headroom because of the moon roof i have about man that's like four inches of extra headroom above myself but noted i do have the seat at its lowest position so if you're a little bit taller, make sure the seat's at its lowest position and you should fit in here pretty well. Uh, you do have memory seats right here. You're gonna have this door sill, which is going to illuminate at night, but uh, just be aware that it only illuminates one color and that one color is red. So you can't change it, unfortunately, which is a little frustrating because you can change all of the other colors throughout the interior. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. Um, but the door material quality is pretty okay. It's soft touch at up top. You're gonna have soft touch there in the middle. The door handle is pretty plasticky and the armrest is nice and plush. You can rest your arm on there. Uh, you do have your trunk release right here, a decent amount of cubby space, and then uh, you're gonna have the rest of your seating controls located right here. And the seats themselves are nice buckets. You sit in them pretty well. Has a decent amount of thigh bolstering right here, decent amount of side bolstering, uh, which is great. And I think the seating position is pretty good. So uh, this is my seating position that I already have set up and the pedals are in a good spot. The steering wheel's at a pretty good reach right here and it's just a really good place to be. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the interior. All right, so go ahead and shut the door on the GLI. Pretty solid shut, I heard something rattle. There's nothing in the door pockets. Let's try that again. Yeah, not sure what that was. But there's a cool graphic that comes up on the screen. Here's a B-roll clip, if you guys didn't catch that right there. And to start, your start stop button is going to be located right here, foot on the brake. Let's go ahead and start with this steering wheel. So the steering wheel in here is very nice. It's got some smooth leather uh, all the way around. You've got some nice red stitching here at the bottom. Looks really good. This aluminum piece that says GLI, once again, looks great. And I love the little pattern here in the middle of the steering wheel. Hopefully you guys can see that there. But it looks really nice. Volkswagen symbol there. Over here to the right, all of your media commands. And then over here to the left, all of your cruise control settings right over here. Now, these buttons right here, so these two, the OK and the up and down, these are used to control this screen right here. I'll get to that in just a second, but I did want to point out also you have your paddle shifters located here in the back. Very small, almost button-like paddle shifters. Here's a better view of them. So really small paddles. Uh, your stocks here for your wipers are not going to be automatic, unfortunately, so you do have to toggle them up and down, which really isn't a huge task. Uh, your blinkers over here and then your high beams located next to that. Now getting back to this screen, it's really simplistic. I love the animations, they're very fast, so if I were to rev this up, 
it's really quick in the way it responds. And then using those buttons I showed you guys, if I hit the buttons going left, I can switch whatever is here in the middle. And then depending on the screen, I can go up and down. And then of course, use your OK to just adjust anything that you'd like. Over here, you are going to have your fuel. And over there, you are going to have your water temp. And then you can change the way this gauge cluster looks by hitting this view button there at the bottom. And so if I hit that view button, you have a very minimalistic view here, which I quite like. And then you're gonna have this view there and then back to your dial. So it's very nice, very intuitive. I really like the way uh, it looks. It's real vivid and the simplicity of it is great. So moving along, you're going to have your light switches located right over here. So you guys can see that. You also have ambient lighting throughout this car. You can switch through different colors of ambient lighting. And at night, it's incredibly vivid, really nice colors, and I quite like it a lot. Uh, the dash up here is all gonna be soft touch. You have your Beats audio sound system in here, which is okay. I personally prefer the Fender audio system you get in the GTI. Um, this one just isn't very good. Uh, the bass is more of like a noise than a feeling, if that makes sense. You, you hear the bass more than you feel it. Uh, and it just doesn't sound very good. The highs aren't very clear. And I think I just, once again, prefer the Fender audio system. And I wish they would have put that in here. And it's such a big deal for me because I love music that it would honestly break the car for me. But once again, that's just a personal experience. I love this uh, touchscreen right here. It's very easy to work. And it does have like a anticipation function. So if I just raise my finger here, it knows that I'm gonna touch it and I'm not actually touching it. So let me get a side view for you guys right here. So if I, there we go. So it's pretty cool. Coming down here, you have your vents. Uh, you're going to have heated seats and cooled seats, which is interesting because you can put them both on at the same time. Uh, so that will be a very odd feeling. Dual zone climate control located right there, fan speed. Uh, and then as you come down, so let me move the shifter here. You're going to have your plug here for your Apple CarPlay. And then right down here, you've got a little area here. I have an iPhone 6S. Yes, I know I need to upgrade, but that's how big that storage area is. So any bigger phones, like the newer iPhones, would probably barely fit in here, uh, but it's still a nice spot to throw a wallet or things like that. Uh, now the shifter, DSG. This is the same actual like physical shifter that's been in Volkswagen since like 2008. It's very old and this is definitely like a parts bin classic right here. It's pretty wild. Uh, but you throw it into reverse, you have your backup camera that comes up, it's decently clear uh, and you do have guidance lines but they aren't gonna turn with the steering wheel, you don't have 360 or anything like that. So it is lacking a little bit in that department. Put it down into drive, if you guys can see there, and you pull it back one time to put it into sport. And just to show you guys, whenever you throw it into sport, it does raise the RPMs ever so slightly. And of course you can throw it into its manual mode, shift just like that. Now the buttons located right here, you have your electronic parking brake, automatic start stop, different drive modes, and then your traction as well as a 12 volt right there. Now speaking of drive modes, if I hit that, here are your different drive modes. You have sport, custom, eco, and normal. Pretty simple. Now moving back, another little area to put stuff, two cup holders right here. Nice, super soft armrest. This thing is mega plush and it's great. So for the driver, it does stick out a little bit further if you want to have more areas to rest your elbow. Uh, for the passenger, it's a little bit shorter, but you can still fit two people's arms on here, no problem. Lift that up, you have another USB in there. Uh, pretty deep storage compartment and then a little area to put the cord. That way it doesn't pinch it whenever you shut this. Glove box, not lockable, but uh, you do have one right there, which is nice. And I love this dash setup. Uh, it does basically face the driver a little bit more, so you can especially see that from the passenger side. Everything just kind of cocoons the driver and it's really a cool feeling. Uh, mirror right up here. You're going to have your lights, which are not gonna be LED, but uh, they are bright enough at night. Your button here to open and close your uh, sunroof, which is very nice, lets in a lot of light. You're going to have your sunglass holder located right there. Vanity mirror. And you do have your light there. Not gonna be LED, but you still have a light nonetheless. 
pretty much it for the front. Let's go ahead and check out the back seat and see the room. All right, so sitting in the back seat of the Jetta GLI. Now, this front seat is set to where I would sit in the passenger side, uh, and I've got an okay amount of room. I've got maybe one inch behind myself, which, I mean, it's good because I'm six feet tall, so the fact that I can sit, sit behind myself with a little bit of room to spare is good no matter what in the compact sedan segment. Uh, you have one map pocket behind here. You don't have any vents back here, unfortunately. You don't have any USB plugs, no 12 volts. Uh, and the door materials back here are mega cheap. It's just hard touch, hard touch, hard touch. The entire door is hard touch, but when you shut it, it's really solid. Uh, and then if you fold this down, you do have an armrest right here. This is an impressively sturdy armrest. Uh, you've got enough area to rest your arm here and put your cups there in the middle. And at the bottom of the cup holder, it's like really soft and gel-like. Um, I don't know, maybe they want your cups to feel comfortable along the ride as well, but it's pretty interesting. I've never seen that before, uh, but it's a really sturdy, high quality armrest. Of course, the leather back here is the same quality as the front. It's really nice. Perforations in the middle, red stitching, and you even have a little bit of like bolstering back here, which is pretty impressive. So you sit in the seat a little bit more. Uh, you've got a nice view of the front because of the moonroof here just makes a lot more light come in. So it doesn't feel as dark back here. You've got one, two windows and this, quarter panel window really helps once again that way you don't feel like you're just in a cave back here so that's really nice uh, grab handle here you have a hook here for dry cleaning a hook here for dry cleaning and that's pretty much going to be the extent of the I guess you can say features back here uh, there's really not much no heated seats and I think vents would really be something that Volkswagen should put back here for sure but let's go ahead and check out the trunk space all right, so coming to the trunk area of the GLI. Now, very simple to get in. There's a button located right behind the Volkswagen symbol. You push that, and the springs in here are super strong. So check this out. Now, it's not an automatic lift gate or anything like that. It's just because of the way the setup is, it just springs open really nicely, and I do quite like that. Uh, but there's lots of room to get in. It's very wide, so you can definitely fit things in here without having like squeeze them in. Um, and this is a pretty high area here. So I feel like you can get a good size box in there, good size suitcase and not have an issue with it. And then it goes back pretty far. You can fold the seats down as well to get more storage space. So you guys can see the cubic feet here on the screen. And then underneath the floor right here. So if I lift this up, you are going to have a spare. It is gonna be a donut, so it's not a full size spare, but then you also have your sub back here for your Beats sound system and then all of your jack assembly equipment there so you can change your tire yourself. Uh, and then shutting it is obviously super simple. You just do that. So let's go ahead and see what's under the hood. All right, so coming under the hood of the GLI. Now, first of all, this is super random, but uh, the stick that holds up the hood, it's just mega flimsy. It feels like it's gonna snap in half. Uh, so that's a little sketchy. But other than that, moving to the engine, this is the two liter turbocharged four-cylinder from Volkswagen Group. So it's the TSI engine and it's gonna make 228 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. That's the exact same horsepower you're gonna get in the GTI. So in the last generation, um, I believe the GLI was making like 210 horsepower and the GTI was making a maximum of 220 horsepower with the performance package. So it's nice to see that they're actually putting the GLI power-wise on the same field as the GTI. So you don't get any kind of a loss in horsepower. So that is nice to see. Um, and I do like the engine setup here. It's very compact and you can even see the turbocharger there in the back, which is, which is kind of cool if you like that kind of thing. Uh, but this is hooked up to a DSG dual clutch and this is going to go to the front wheels only just like uh, the GTI. And then you guys can see the fuel economy specs here on the screen. Because this is the automatic, it is getting like a maximum of 32 miles per gallon, which is pretty good considering the performance. Uh, but it is to be noted that this is recommended to run off of premium fuel because of the way this is engineered, because of the turbocharger, things like that. Uh, especially to get maximum performance at what's, it's what Volkswagen recommends. But uh, enough under the hood, let's go ahead and take this for a drive and see how it does. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna see how fast this can get to 60 by doing a little launch control. Very easy, make sure you have the car in sport mode. I have traction all the way off. You don't really have to do that. I'm just doing it so that way the computer doesn't cut power. Um, pull the transmission back. It says D right now, if you guys can see that. Pull it back until it says S for sport. And at that point, you just floor the brake, floor the gas, and then it'll bounce right below 4,000 RPM and you'll hear it kind of bouncing up and down. So here we go. There we 
we go. 40, 50, 60. Not bad at all. I'd say that's definitely in the mid five seconds, um, but because of that little bit of a pause between first and second gear, so it spun right at the top of first gear, and then when it shifted in a second, there was a little bit of like a, a brief pause before it got back onto the power again. Um, and if, if that basically tiny blip in between first and second gear would have been smoothed out, I think this would easily be in like the low five seconds uh, because it's got a lot of push. It has, you know, a ton of torque from that turbo and it spools up pretty quickly. Um, but once you are in boost, then the car really starts to feel fun. Okay, so now I'm going downhill on Ortega Highway and this will be a good way for me to test the brakes, the handling, and to see how this car does overall. So, brakes are good. These are the same brakes lifted off of the Volkswagen Golf R, which is pretty cool. So you've got some beefy brakes on here. Uh, in a way, you may say this car is over-braked, but that's really never an issue, especially in situations like this. You wanna have brakes where the pedal doesn't get longer, uh, the braking feel doesn't get softer, over time you want it to stay consistent and the brake feel is good uh, it has a little bit of numbness right at the top but once you get past that numbness it's um, pretty confidence inspiring brake feel now obviously this is the DSG and the shifts are super fast because this is the dual clutch that Volkswagen has been you know working on for the past however many years it's good it's crisp downshifts are great now, this is in sport mode, obviously, and we talked about it earlier, it's holding the revs up a little bit higher. Staying in boost is crucial whenever you're doing stuff like this because that's what makes it fun. And this thing does so well. You guys can see it's just doing such a good job. And it changes direction in a very satisfying way. The steering is really good. Uh, it's still not as tight, once again, as the GTI, but it's really good man and it really grips these hand cooked tires I'm so impressed with they've got so much grip um, and for a front wheel drive car I mean this thing is just hanging on Whew. yeah it does a good job It just, it just dances, it's so good. Man, yeah. And obviously this road is phenomenal, um, so there's that as well. So it will auto upshift for you, which is kind of frustrating, um, but you know, you get used to it, unfortunately. Yeah, the way this thing changes direction is, is really good. It's funny because you look at this car, you look at the GTI, and I think it's because if you've driven a GTI, you know what it's about, you've seen all the reviews on it, and the GLI, let's be honest, has always been... I don't know, I guess it's a car that not a lot of people are enthusiastic about. I mean, the GTI has definitely outshone the GLI for many, many years, especially because the GLI always got less power than the GTI. Um, and it was more comfortable or more premium than the GTI, so no one really saw a reason to buy it. Now that it has the same components, the same powertrain, same transmission, same horsepower, uh, they didn't neuter this in any way, it's, it's good. Uh, it's just a little bit softer, 
and that's okay. But yeah, guys, at the end of the day, the GLI is much improved, especially over the last generation. It's, it's just a blast to drive. All right, so to end my video on the GLI, I think my final thoughts about the car are gonna be pretty positive. I mean, if you want something like this, there's really not a lot of options. And even though this looks to be the size of like an Accord and things like that, you gotta remember this is still a compact car. So this still competes against vehicles like um, the Mazda 3, the Honda Civic. So this technically competes against the Civic Si, whereas a lot of people compare it to like a Honda Accord. Um, and I think when you consider that, this is really one of the sportiest vehicles you can get in the segment, especially considering it has an actual differential. Um, it has a nice turbocharged engine, a dual clutch, and it's got really solid handling and pretty good tires out of the factory. Uh, and considering also that it has the Golf R brakes, this is a well over braked vehicle and that means you can add more horsepower to it, tune it, and it's still gonna have that brake capability to last you whenever you bump up that horsepower. So I think it's a pretty decent buy. Let me know what you guys think by commenting below. Would you get the GLI or would you pick something else over the GLI? But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.